about that in the build instructions. And then there's another directory which is used kind of free form, but uh, uh, co usually called the same just f for sake of having a convention. Um, in this directory, you can add extra files which are either important to the package itself or to the build process of the package. Sometimes you need to pre-generate a config file and this is the place to put it. Now let's uh, continue with the first file uh, in a more in-depth look. Uh, the syntax is, as I already mentioned, the Linux 2.6 kernel configuration format. And this is an example of what it looks like for a standard package. Uh, the first line defines the config entry. Um, by convention, all configuration names for packages start with BR2, which refers to the build root 2 of the userlibc build root that we got some of our code from. And the second line, the select, uh, is actually our way of handling dependencies. If one package depends on another, rather than adding a depend line on it, we add a select line so that if you select this package and it requires another package, uh, it will automatically get selected by the menu config system so you don't have to look around for all the missing libraries before you can select the software that you want. And um, this is defined as try state. Uh, this try state thing probably needs some more explanation. Um, we have uh, three states for uh, a package selection. First, uh, you can select, uh, you can deselect it completely. It will not get downloaded or get built by the build system. And the second state is uh, selected completely. Um, if you, if you just select yes on the package, then it will download the package, compile it, and embed it into the resulting firmware image if you're using the build root. And um, then there's the th uh, third state, which probably caused most of the confusion, if you select it as module. Now, if you, if you look at the kernel configuration system, if you select the package as module there, then th this usually means that you have a separate object file after the build, which you can load into the running kernel. Um, now, OpenWRT packages uh, are much in the same way. If you select the package as module, then it will get downloaded and get built, but it will just not get embedded into the resulting firmware image. So you have an external package which you can install into the firmware on the writable file system at any later time. Um, another thing, this also applies to kernel modules. So if you, if you select a kernel module, it, would not, it will not get built into the, the actual kernel that you have. It will just get built as a, as a package and embedded into the firmware image. Okay, af uh, after that, uh, there's the default which you can set. It's usually either yes, or we also use default M uh, with an if, uh, constraint for uh, the d developer selection. Um, to know how this works, you can just look at other packages. We have lots of examples in our source tree. And the last one, of course, is the help text. Now I'll show you what, uh, how, what this looks like. If you open the menu config, um, you see here the highlighted item is uh, the, the, the configuration that I added previously with the name uh, after the try state command. And um, if you go on the help text, you will see something like this with the name of the, of the actual config option and the help text. Now to the uh, actual package make file. This is probably the most uh, uh, difficult thing for new package porters to understand. Um, we have a standard format for make files because we use a lot of common code, most of which is already included in the first line. You see, uh, it, it includes the file rules.mk from the top here, and uh, the responsibility of this file is to set most of the variables that are important for cross-compiling. Um, 
it makes sure that you, you that all the directories that you need access to, like the staging directory where the toolchain lives, or the directory where the binary packages go, that these are all accessible. And after that, you see a lot of variable assignments. Um, you should always use these names because some of them are only used implicitly. So always stick to the template. The first one, of, obviously, is the package name. And the second one, the upstream source version. Um, as you will see in, in the later PKG source variable, uh, these are usually used in your other variable assignments as well, so you, you don't need to duplicate everything, and it's easier to change the templates. Um, the next one after version is the release. This is usually OpenWRT specific. Uh, over time, you will, uh, most of the time, make changes to your packages, and uh, this release indicates your version of the same upstream release. And the next variable is also quite important. If, you're, uh, if you instruct the build system to download packages from an external source, we use MD5 sums to verify that the download uh, is saved correctly. So uh, if the, the getter program for some reason cancels during the download, then this um, MD5 sum will obviously not match, and you will see a more descriptive error message instead of just an, a tar error or something like that. And in the next variable, in the PKG source URL, you will uh, see some uh, special syntax that we added for source URLs. Because SourceForge uses a lot of dynamic mirrors, uh, we have added this special syntax to download packages from SourceForge. It will automatically fe fetch the package from a random SourceForge mirror. But um, in this variable, you can also add uh, regular URLs. It doesn't matter. Um, the next uh, variable is also quite important. Uh, it's used both, uh, both for downloading the actual source, because you see uh, the source URL is not the full URL to the package itself. It's just the URL to the actual file that gets downloaded um, without the file name part itself. And the file name part itself uh, needs to be added in the line below. This has the following reason. If you download such a package, it will usually retain its file name, and the build system needs to know about that so it can extract the file. And um, another important variable below that is the PKG cat variable. You uh, have, sometimes you have bzip2 compressed archives, and sometimes you have gzip compressed archives. And again, the build system needs to know about the difference between them. So you can specify the command which will extract the, the, tar, uh, the, the compressed part of the tar file and pipe it to tar itself. And the last of these pre-assigned variables is the build directory. Um, if you download a uh, tar file from an upstream uh, source, you usually get a directory, an extra directory, if you're ex extracting the package. And again, the build system needs to know about that, so you can specify this directory in this PKG build your variable. And the last line is for activating all the pre-formatted, uh, pre pre-compiled targets which we have. Uh, to make the build process easier. I will go more into detail in the next slide. Um, this was quite a lot of information, I think. Are there any questions so far? No? Okay. Then I'll just go on. Um, the, the first important part of the actually, uh, actual binary building part of the makefile is the package declaration, which uses a template that we wrote. Um, you see, it, it calls the template called PKG template, and the first parameter is, uh, uh, is actually the name of the config without this, the standard part. It is also used in several other instances, which you will see later. 
um, it's mostly the base uh, for, so that you can refer to a specific binary package that you're building if you're downloading, uh, uh, if, you, if you're building uh, several packages from one source. So you need to differentiate between them. The next one is actually the name of, uh, the, pack, of the binary package as seen by IPKG. Um, this is also the name of the control file. And uh, usually for most cases it's enough to just write the name in uppercase once and in lowercase uh, for the other parameter and it would just work then. And um, the next parameter after the backslash, uh, which is, isn't actually present in the original make files, it's just to denote a line break here. And the next parameter is, is uh, the package version as seen by the IPKG package. Um, if you look at the slide, slide before, uh, we differentiate between the, the upstream package version and the package release. And in the actual package version that we have here, we combine both into one. And of course, the last important parameter is the architecture of the package. Mostly, this is set at build time already, but uh, sometimes you may want to have packages that work on all architectures. <coughs> and uh, so you can just fill in all here instead of the arch variable, which, by the way, is preset by the build system. Now, uh, let's look at the important build targets. Usually, uh, the process for building a package is first you extract the package, the build system already complete, uh, completely does that for you without and adding any extra makefile targets. And the next step is to run a configure script, which may or may not be present in the package. So the first uh, actual package building target in this makefile is the dot configure target prefixed by the package build year. So uh, where the comment is run the package configure script, uh, there you can actually put the custom commands that you require for, uh, for cross-compiling, uh, for running the cross-compiling configure script. And the last line, the touch, is only to uh, let make know about the successful run of the configure target. So it will handle the dependencies correctly. If you're familiar with uh, the makefile syntax, uh, you will uh, know this from other packages as well. This is just simple stamp files. And another target, oh, a typo here, it just, should just say build. Um, this works actually in the same way. Uh, you, you just add the commands here to run the main make process of your package because usually you start off with a configure, then you run a make, and then you can, if you use multiple binary packages from the same source, uh, in, split the files off in several packages. And now, uh, the important package targets which apply to binary packages. You see here, um, the variable IPKG S trace is actually preset by the build system, and the uppercase S trace here is actually what you specified in the line. Let me go back. Oh, here it is. Uh, this uppercase S trace here, this is the same name that you also use in this variable. And what this package should do is copy all files into the directory uh, which is given by the name idea s trace in another variable, which is also again set by the build system. The final command for uh, this package build is usually the same for all packages except for the name part. Um, you usually don't need to change anything in that. It will run the IPKG script for building the package. <laughs> okay. Um, now some extra targets. Um, some packages may need to be behave differently if you clean them because sometimes you have a large package 
which takes a lot of time to uncompress and to patch, or maybe sometimes you want to make changes to the actual, actual extracted build directory. So you can add a target that we refer to as mostly clean, um, which basically, basically just runs make clean in your source package directory. <laughs> 